Hello and welcome to Real Science for Kids. The videos in this series are the Advanced Experiments for Level 1 Chemistry. The title of this experiment is An Introduction to Titrations. Have fun discovering real science with Rebecca. Hi, I'm Dr. Rebecca Keller. Today we're going to do an acid-base titration experiment. But before we do the experiment, I wanted to say a few words about what a titration is. Why do we do titrations? What are they for? And what exactly is happening when we do a titration experiment? Well, by now, all of you know that acids and bases react with each other. And one of the interesting things that we can observe during a reaction is actually how it happens. So, if I take a little vinegar, and I take ammonia, and I add these two together, we will get a chemical reaction. And if I add some cabbage juice, red cabbage juice indicator to my reaction beaker, I can actually watch the reaction happen. So let's add a little bit of indicator to the flask. And if I add a little bit of vinegar now, this should turn bright pink telling me that it's an acid. And indeed it does. It turns a nice bright pink. Now, I can observe what happens when I add ammonia. Ammonia is a base and it's going to react with the acid in the beaker and when the color changes I will know that the reaction has gone to completion. So if I add just a little teeny bit of ammonia I can see that it starts to react and in fact you can see I've already added so much ammonia that the solution turns green. This tells me that I've already gone past the full reaction. So it was in, it was an acid, and then now it's reacted with a base, and now there's excess base in my reaction beaker. So by doing a titration, we can slow the reaction down, and we can observe what happens as the base is being added to the acid. In fact, we can watch when the end point of the reaction occurs, because there will be a distinct and dramatic color change from pink to green and we can actually watch the point when this happens. And if we uh, plot our data, we can actually figure out how, what the reaction looks like. So let's go ahead and do a uh, acid-base titration. And what we will need is I'm going to take my laboratory notebook so that I can write down uh, and record the data. I'm going to use a bigger jar just in case we need more space so I'm going to use a, a bigger jar, and the reaction calls for one quarter cup of vinegar. So I'm going to add about a quarter cup of vinegar to my reaction jar. And then I want to add enough red cabbage indicator to make a nice bright pink color. But not too much. You don't want to add too much indicator because you don't want to dilute it down too much. But I'm going to add enough so that it's bright pink. So there we go. We have our vinegar with our red cabbage indicator inside the jar. And we're now going to add, very slowly, ammonia. And we're going to add ammonia one teaspoon at a time. So I have a measuring spoons, and I'm just going to pour some ammonia into the measuring spoon. one teaspoon at a time. So that's one teaspoon. And you can see it immediately starts to turn green in the center, but as I swirl it, it turns pink again. So that tells me the reaction has not completed. And I'm going to add another teaspoon. Swirling, so that's two teaspoons. And my color is still pink. Three teaspoons. Green in the middle, but it's still pink. Four teaspoons. Mm, it's starting to turn a little purple, 
left. It's still mostly pink. I would say pink and purple at four teaspoons. Five teaspoons. And there we go. We're over the reaction now at five teaspoons. So it went from pink to green at five teaspoons. So we did an acid base titration experiment and we used a household vinegar. We added some red cabbage indicator and we used concentrated ammonia. And we added a teaspoon at a time until we saw the pink color turned to green. And we were able to see this transition occur within five teaspoons. And what this tells me is that the reaction is moving pretty quickly. In fact, I am probably using my ammonia as a little bit too concentrated. So I want to do it the reaction again, but this time I have diluted the household ammonia um, one to four. And so the reaction should go much slower than it did before. So again, we're going to use a quarter cup of vinegar. I'm going to add this to my reaction flask. I'm going to add a little bit of cabbage indicator. I get a nice pink color. And now I will use the diluted ammonia and we'll see how many teaspoons it takes to turn the pink color green. Here's one, two, three, four. You can already tell that the reaction is going much more slowly. Five, six, seven, Eight, and I'm getting closer. I can tell because the color is starting to change. Nine, you can see that the color is quite a bit purple. So this is interesting. So now I have slowed the reaction down um, so that I can see when this transi transition is actually occurring. So for a quarter cup of vinegar with a diluted ammonia, the transition is starting to occur between eight and nine. 10, there we've gone over. So I lengthened out the experiment so that I could tell between eight and nine the, um, how the color change would occur. And so this tells me that we're right, we're basically right over the, um, the completion of the reaction. So what that means is that all of the acid that was in the beaker has been converted to salt and we have salt and water, and we actually have too much base. So if I continue to add base, you can see I, the color stays green. And so what this tells me is the reaction has completed. I have converted all of the vinegar, all of the acid, into um, salt and water, and any more base I add is just turning the pH of the solution uh, basic. So playing with titrations is really a lot of fun. You can change the concentration of either your ammonia or you can change the concentration of your vinegar by adding distilled water to either of them then you can lengthen out the the uh, titration you could make it you could use dilute more dilute ammonia or more dilute vinegar and you could really watch um, each step of the reaction and so it's useful to do a titration because you can get additional information about the reaction and you can plot the data you can get, take a look at how the reaction went, and you can even calculate the endpoint. When did the uh, reaction complete? So it was really fun to do an acid-based titration. It's interesting when we can use the red cabbage indicator to watch an acid-based reaction actually occurring. So join me next time, and we'll do another fun experiment. Discovering Real Science with Rebecca is presented by Gravitas Publications Incorporated in collaboration with Burt Johnson Video Productions. Visit them at webbizvideos.com. Cue the chuckling chipmunk. Hi, I'm Bugs Bunny. You can actually find out how much... Um, no, I don't want to say that. Just scratch that whole thing. Today, we're going to do an acid-base titate...
the Nimbin experiment. And we used concentrated ammonia, a tablespoon, actually a teaspoon, let me do that again. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't laugh, man. It's interesting to use cabbage juice indicator. I don't know why it is, sometimes that camera just makes me forget what I'm gonna say. Now cue the cheering children, cause we're done. Yeah!